Welcome back to the Goldmark Gallery. As we continue to explore the extraordinary work that's been left behind in Stanley Jones' personal archive, we thought this was a great opportunity to put on an exhibition of prints by Barbara Hepworth. Better known as a sculptor, Hepworth is currently enjoying a bit of a moment. She has a major touring exhibition, her work going around the country. So this is a great opportunity to see a large number of her prints from later in her career here in this downstairs space. While the landscape and her particular place within the landscape, how she viewed it, was sort of the enduring theme of Hepworth's work, of her career, you'll see from this exhibition that she was an unashamedly abstract artist. Her work dealt largely with geometric form, with circles and spheres, with arcs, with intersecting lines. But we'll see from this exhibition, just from these pieces behind me, oblique forms here, the title for this work, and again, sun setting, two very different titles that hint at how Hepworth could look to her sculpture or to the landscape, to the world around her, to the sun, to the celestial sphere for inspiration. All of the lithographs that you'll see in this exhibition came directly from the personal archive of Stanley Jones, master British lithographer. They were made in the late 1960s, but actually Hepworth had first met Stanley Jones in 1958. At that time, they were in very different points in their career. Stanley Jones was at the start of his. He'd just come from a sort of apprenticeship served in Paris. He was asked to help set up the newly established Cohen Studio. At the time, the Cohen Studio hadn't even been built. In the time that it was taking them to get the machinery together, he'd been sent along to St. Ives to try and work out some future collaborations with the artists working in the Connolly there. Barbara Hepworth, on the other hand, was in the latter half of her career. She was probably at the peak of her powers at that point. And she had her own studio at Trowin in St. Ives and uh, an enclosed garden space that housed her sculpture and looked beyond to the bay and the horizon out at the sea. But I think to understand some of these prints in this exhibition, it would help to go even further back in time because the 1950s were a really difficult period for Barbara Hepworth, personally and professionally. In 1951, she had separated from her second husband, Ben Nicholson. Two years later, her eldest son, Paul, from her first marriage to the sculptor John Skeeping, tragically died in an aeroplane accident over Thailand. A year later, Hepworth travelled to Greece, to the islands of the Aegean, as a way of kind of removing herself from St. Ives, from confronting her grief to console herself and also to find fresh inspiration. She described actually running ahead of the, the crowds of tourists that were there with her up to the ruined sites and looking out and feeling the warmth of the wind around her in these magnificent ruins, looking out across the horizon to the sea line, the beating sun above her. Printmaking allowed her the opportunity to return to that time period. So many of the prints in this exhibition come from the Aegean Suite, uh, made many years later, the late 1960s. One of my favourites is here on the back wall from the island of Delos, uh, an island known as the birthplace of the ancient Greek god Apollo. And you can see in just this very simple print everything that she must have taken away from this amazing and probably quite difficult trip too. The fantastic strength of that yellow gives across all of that Mediterranean colour of the sun. Just these few very simple vertical lines sort of project out the shapes of the columns from the various temple ruins on the island. And that idea of the sun, the trajectory of the sun out beyond them in the sky. Printmaking has often been for artists a way of returning to ideas, exploring themes that haven't really had a voice that they could find sort of fresh life in before. And I very much think that that's what Hepworth treated this time with Stanley Jones as, a period where she could reflect, look at her own work, look at her experiences over the last 10, 20 years, and find something new to say in a very new medium. Now, it would probably be helpful at this point to describe exactly what a lithograph is. 
Traditional lithography uses a stone block and it's a print medium that's very different from, say, etching or a woodcut where you're having to cut into a material. With lithography, traditionally, you would draw or brush on your image onto the stone using a kind of greasy medium. That image is then fixed to the stone and the printing process works on the basis that oil and water do not go together. The stone is wet with water so that the water sits on the surface of the stone and then an oily ink is rolled across the block. Where the stone is wet, where nothing's been drawn, the water repels the ink, but where those marks have left their, their, their sign on the stone block, that will pick up the greasy ink and allow the image to be printed. The great power of lithography is its versatility. You can basically replicate almost any effect that you would as a, as a painter, as a watercolour artist. You'll see just from these prints on this wall here, we've got textures that look almost like rubbings, that look like watercolour washes. We've got lines that have that kind of soft burr-like quality that a pencil might have or a crayon. It's an extraordinarily versatile medium that allows an artist to capture all kinds of tones, of qualities of line, of uh, things that a sculptor in particular might find very interesting. By the time Stanley Jones came to work with Barbara Hepworth, lithography had moved uh, leaps and bounds. It wasn't just stone blocks that you could draw on, but also zinc plates and thin transfer papers, which made it a lot easier for him to work with artists within their own studios. Stanley was to come directly to Hepworth's studio in St Ives and work there. He remembers turning up and being proffered the customary tumbler of whisky that Barbara Hepworth would offer her visitors. He remembers her chain smoking out in the garden, looking out to the sea beyond. And he also remembers that she would work in the very early hours of the morning. She would rise and watch the sun moving over the horizon line and start to shine through the sculptures in her garden and douse the worktop in light. Although these three prints on this back wall are from uh, the Aegean suite, they deal with that Greece uh, uh, time period, there's a, a sense here that also that, that that time of looking out in the garden, watching the changing light in those very early hours, watching the changing forms, must have been informing her work. So although we've got these floating forms, architectural fragments reminiscent of the temple ruins in Greece, they could also bring to mind things like water on the surface of leaves, uh, the shadows that leaves cast across the stone and metal sculptures in her garden. Much of Barbara Hepworth's sculptural work deals with the relationship between the viewer and the piece in front of them, the way that you move around a form, maybe look through it, how you can sometimes fit inside her largest pieces, how you see through it, how the colour changes from one side to another. For her, it was a kind of mirror of the figure in the landscape, the way that human beings relate to and are affected emotionally by the architecture around them, by the landscape around them, our own relationship within space. Much of her work in print is drawing on the same thing that her sculpture is. It's drawing on the, the colours, the textures, the forms that she saw in the landscape immediately around her in St Ives, around the bay, around her studio, the shapes of the stones, the pebbles built in around her studio house, the shapes that she saw on the beach, the, the sand, the, uh, the washed up debris along the coastline shore. There is, however, a very specific source of inspiration for some of these prints. We have to remember that in the summer of 1969, the world was brought together by the news of the first moon landings. Now, ever since Paul had been a pilot, Barbara Hepworth had been fascinated, uh, obsessed over the idea of flight, of soaring above, viewing the landscape from below. She loved the idea of the moon and its kind of invisible pull on the tide, the idea of the celestial charting of the sun. She described how the movement of the sun and the moon applied a kind of tension to her life, and that's a really interesting word, because we see it in these prints in the way that she has these circular forms moving around, these lines intersecting, the idea of something being compassed or charted 
we've got two of my favourite prints in the exhibition here. Again, dealing with that solar theme, sun and marble and sun and water. They show how, for Hepworth, it was predominantly the textures that she was able to find in lithography, how she could affect the surface of the thing in front of her that really enabled her to get the variety in some of these suites. These beautiful colours really bring in those textures to life. It also reminds me of a lovely story that she told of how on a return trip from America in an airplane, she asked the pilots if she could come into the cockpit and sketch out the front window of the plane. She could see the sun past the, uh, the clouds around her. She described the sort of awesome simplicity of the pilots working beautifully together as they soared through the air. And this idea of a kind of celestial perspective, looking out on everything below her, must have been very powerful for her. We've also got this fantastic original drawing by Hepworth that gives us a real insight into how the actual drawn work might then translate into a print. As you'll see from an image of the print, we can show the two of them side by side, slight changes have occurred on the basis of how it must have reproduced uh, it in print. You can see how the orange background has been strengthened, some of these black lines have been strengthened. This background which looks like it's been achieved through maybe a frottage rubbing over the surface, perhaps of just a stone block or a wooden block that was there in the studio. It's a fascinating image. It has echoes of carvings that Hepworth made uh, in alabaster in the 1960s. But for me, it reminds me in particular of a bronze piece produced almost exactly the same time as the prints in this exhibition. This bronze was called Two Forms Divided Circle. A cast of this piece sat in Dulwich Park, and I remember seeing it on childhood trips to the park when I used to go and visit my grandparents in nearby West Norwood. It wasn't until years later when I went to Hepworth's studio garden and saw a cast of the same piece there that I kind of understood it and it seemed to make sense. Hepworth was sometimes criticised for being almost sort of coldly pure, coldly geometric, but it's in that garden, that beautiful enclosed garden, suddenly this world starts to make sense. These images start to make sense. So when I see a beautiful drawing like this, I like to imagine Hepworth in her studio, taking rubbings from the stone, the wood, the surfaces around her. I like to imagine her looking out to that space beyond, to the sea line, to the skyline, and how all of that experience, how the beauty, the strange, mysterious history of that place was suffused in her abstract work. I hope you've enjoyed this exhibition and look forward to seeing you in the next one.